You're listening to episode 153 of the Christian Travelers Network. Today's topic is five holy sites from the Easter story to visit in Israel. Hi, my name is Sarah and I have a background in theology and a love for travel. Having visited nine different countries and served in five congregations, I wanted to create an environment that discusses and encourages the overlap of my two favorite things the Lord, and travel. And if you have a passion for these things, or wanting to learn how God is such an integral part of our daily adventures, then you've come to the right place. Today's topic is five holy sites from the Easter story to visit in Israel. Hi, Christian travelers. I am so glad that you are here today because we're going to be taking a look at Israel, where many of the biblical sites and stories from scripture took place. And uh, we're going to be taking a closer look at five of the most, what I consider significant places, um, and how you can visit them today in Israel. But before we dive into that, I want to once again, point you to our website, christiantravelers.net. There we'll have other resources, PDFs, and details about Israel, traveling by train, traveling by plane, and how you can continue to grow in your faith. Not only that, we're in the process of developing an online platform that allows you to connect with other Christian travelers around the world, share your trips, and join in virtual Bible studies and more. So head to our website and sign up for our email list so that you don't miss any of those notifications. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive in. In light of the fact that Easter just came in the month of April, kind of late, I know, in the year, we're going to go ahead and take a look at some of the biblical sites in Israel and see how we can visit them today. Now, when it comes to Holy Week, the first thing that comes to mind is Palm Sunday. This was an event in scripture where Jesus walked down the roads, was paraded in with palm branches, people shouting hallelujah, thinking that he was going to be the king, not a heavenly king, but an earthly king, one to free them from the Romans. And if we turn to John chapter 12, we see that Jesus came riding in on a donkey, and this was a big triumphant entry. They led him through town, and the Pharisees were upset that the people were so in love with him. We see a lot of drama going on here, but then Jesus rejected their offer to become king, and he left. So. If you want to reenact this special scene in Israel where we believe that he actually walked, um, they have a Palm Sunday processional tour that happens on Palm Sunday in Israel. And you can march with groups of Christians for, who travel from around the world with palm branches lifted high and praise the king. So if you're wanting to participate in this, I encourage you to check it out. And then while you're walking this processional, I encourage you to reflect on what kind of king you are looking for. These people were looking for an earthly king who checked their boxes, who fulfilled their earthly needs. And oftentimes we tend to treat God the same way. We tend to think, hey God, I'll worship you if you do X, Y, and Z. And sometimes we get angry when God doesn't do things the way that we want. Uh, that's part of our sinful nature. And as you continue through these five sites in Israel, uh, you'll uncover more about this, but Take some time while walking through this processional and really ponder what are some of those maybe sinful points where you wanted God to be something other than what he is. Now, the next place that I encourage you to visit is called the Cenacle or the Upper Room. This is where the Last Supper took place. So Holy Week was a time of preparation for um, the Passover, something that back in the day, in the story of Exodus, when the people left Egypt, they had to leave and they went through a series of 10 plagues. Moses led them out of Egypt, but they celebrated the first Passover then. And that was they 
had the opportunity to declare their faith in the Lord by sacrificing a lamb and painting its blood on their doorposts. God passed through Egypt and anyone who didn't have their door painted, they lost their firstborn son. This was a precursor to what Christ is and what he represents, but they didn't know it then. And continuing with the Jewish tradition, it was celebrated year after year. And then Jesus came and he was celebrating his last supper in the upper room during Passover. He washed the disciples' feet as expressed in John 13. And some of the disciples even said, you know, don't clean my feet. You know, like that's a servant's job. I, you know, you're my teacher. That just doesn't seem right. And as such, Jesus used it as a teaching point that we are to serve others as Christians, that um, we have to do some humble acts once in a while. And he was demonstrating for us what that could look like. Not only that, if we jump to Matthew 26, we see that they had their first Holy Communion. Jesus blessed the, the wine and the bread, which would have been typical items for uh, a Passover meal. And he talked about the fact that he was the body and that he is the blood represented in these items and that we are to continue to have communion in remembrance of him. So when you visit the cenacle or the upper room in Israel, I encourage you to take some time to reflect on Jesus' sacrifice. Oftentimes we take communion and we may just go through the motions. We might not always reflect on our own sin, but take a moment and really reflect upon that piece of the story. The next section that I encourage you to do is the Via Dorosola. I might be mispronouncing it, but it means the way of suffering. It is the route in which Jesus took from the time that he was accused by Pontius Pilate to the time that he was crucified. And it has 14 sites along this route that align with scripture. Uh, specifically, we can see that starting in Matthew 27, um, and going really through the whole chapter, you can follow along with this story. So if you're walking this road, I encourage you to start the day by even reading the scripture, just so it's in the back of your mind and may help you bring some of those points to your attention. But one of the things that he talked about with Pontius Pilate was what is truth? Pontius Pilate didn't know what it was, and truthfully, many people in our world today do not know what truth is. It's twisted by the media, it's twisted for everyone's benefit, and many people don't believe that there is such a thing as truth. But as Christians, we know that the Lord is truth. He is true, and everything he speaks in scripture is also true. So take some moment to reflect on this as you walk this route. And if you want to walk it with others, every Friday there is a group of people that walk the route together um, and really reflect on and remember what it truly means. Uh, they meet at different times throughout the year. I think it's at 3 p.m. during some seasons and then in the winter it might be 4 p.m. But Google that, make sure that you have the right information, maybe even message them to make sure that you can join the group um, and that you won't miss it. Um, but this is one of the really significant times because it's this building of anticipation um, and the carrying of the cross all the way up to the place where he will ultimately die. So as you build that anticipation, reflect on what truth is, reflect on his sacrifice um, and what that means in your own life's journey. Now, my fifth and final suggestion, and I know I'm likely going to mispronounce it, is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre sepulcher. Um, basically, it's Calvary or Golgotha or the place of the skull. It is the place that represents where Jesus was crucified and where his tomb is. This has been highly fought over between the Muslim and the Christian traditions, um, as both of them claim Jesus as some sort of prophet, but as Christians, we believe him to be the savior. So it's a fought over piece of property, um, but it's an important one to go visit um, because it is where Jesus's blood shed for us, where he breathed his last and said, it is 
finished and where he forgave us, even though we don't know the fact that our sins are hurting him. Uh, there's many sins we commit every day, very well aware of, but there are many sins that we just seem to disregard or are totally unattuned to. So all of these sins were forgiven for the people there and for us as well. And then ultimately the tomb, such a significant part to the Easter story where it was sealed, the guards were standing there, yet there was a massive earthquake. The stone rolled away and there was no one in the tomb for Jesus had risen. And when Mary Magdalene went to go wrap Jesus's body in balms, she wept because her savior wasn't there, her teacher, her friend. And yet when he said Mary, she realized that the person she was talking to was not a gardener, but was in fact the risen Lord. All of these are such significant moments to the Easter story. So spend some time there. And while you're there, reflect truly on what Jesus' forgiveness and freedom means to you, what eternity means to you, and why it's so important to be like Mary Magdalene and run and tell others the good news. So those are five really significant places I encourage you to visit in Israel. And you can always find other tours, groups to go with to learn more about the historical significance. It's always great to have a tour guide to share some of that insight and wisdom. Um, but when you're there, especially if you choose to go around an Easter season, remember that the large majority of the people in Israel are Jewish. And so they are still celebrating the Passover. They are still waiting for the Messiah to come. And as a result, many restaurants and businesses may be closed. So uh, you have to keep that in mind when planning your trip and understand that some things that you may have intended to go see um, may not be open at that time. Well, Christian Travelers, I hope that gives you a little bit of insight and wisdom. Um, I'm actually working on putting together the ideal itinerary for visiting Israel. Um, and that will be one of those things on our new platform uh, that will allow you to connect with other Christian travelers, do Bible studies online together, and so much more. So stay tuned for that. If you haven't signed up for our email list, you can go to christiantravelers.net to do that as well. In addition, I encourage you to check out episode 101, What Holy Sites and Cities Are Associated with Christianity, with Susan and Rick McCarthy. Not only do they talk about Israel, but they talk about a lot of other holy sites in other countries and they even have an amazing book with some important resources and other questions that you can ponder as you visit and tour these places. So if you're going there, I highly encourage you to take that book along. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, if you liked today's episode, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button, share this with a friend, and leave a review. Those are three simple ways that you can encourage others to connect and grow in their faith and travels. And until next time, safe travels and God bless.